Hello everyone, this is Flemmy, and welcome back to another interview with Jorge Yao, also known as George Yao. We are back for part four of our interview. If you did not catch the previous two, they came out about two weeks ago when we covered all sorts of stuff. First one covered gems and money in Clash of Clans, and especially among high-level players. Second one covered high-level attacks and strategy. And third one covered sort of everything else we missed out on. So go check those out if uh, you have, uh, have not caught them yet. And in this video, we will be talking about a couple more things. So, we'll be talking about some questions that were raised in the last one, as well as some of your guys' uh, questions and comments, sort of concerns and thoughts for Jorge. So, George, how you doing? Great, how are you? I'm doing great myself. Glad to be back for another one. So, tell me about last time. We had finished off just before you reached 4,000 trophies. What happened? So, I think I hit, I believe I hit 4,000 that night, the night, um... So we did the the interview really early in the morning. I think it was Saturday morning, I believe. It was. Um, and I hit 4,000, I believe, uh, Saturday night. And once I hit 4,000, obviously I took a shield right away um, to avoid any sort of, you know, complications or disconnections. So I just went straight to bed. <laughs> so when you say you took a shield, you bought a shield or you I had a cheap a shield? shield? I bought a 24-hour shield. Okay, sounds good. So then what happened as soon as that ran out? Because some people noticed that you fell off 4,000 pretty quick. Yeah, actually, um, so I was going to purchase another shield, but uh, I actually made a mistake and timed, timed the, uh, the runoff of my shield incorrectly. So what happened was I was probably like 30 seconds late um, turning on my, my iPad and going into the app, and... So when I opened up the game, I was already being attacked. And at that point, I already had my town hall outside my base. You know, I was ready for a longer shield. And when that happened, I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> like, someone is going to three-star me and take, you know, probably 59 cups. And so I was just waiting and watching this countdown go down for about two and a half minutes, just anxious, waiting for this, you know, doom, like impending doom. And... Luckily, I only got two starred for, I think, close to 40 cups, which was a miracle in my, uh, in my mind. So, luckily, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Wow, that's pretty amazing and pretty unlucky right there. And maybe yeah. lucky at the same time. Just to clear up a few points, for those of you who are listening to this interview and are not aware, you cannot actually load the game when you're under attack. So if you turn on your device and you're under attack, it will say, your base is currently under attack, please wait however long it has a countdown. So you missed it by 30 seconds, you said? Yep, Wow. 30 that, seconds. After a 24-hour shield you had bought, that is a very small countdown. Yeah, I was hurrying back from work on my lunch break, and I was late uh, 30 seconds to opening it, and got attacked so very so i didn't very i didn't hold the four thousand uh you know count very long it was probably 24 hours 36 hours at most wow and went back down uh so well congratulations on hitting four thousand what was your plan did you decide are you have you have you quit since then um well i mean that whole week was just rough because you know i wanted to show people that I wasn't, it wasn't just a fluke, and I wanted to maintain 4,000 as long as possible, and I could get back there. So that entire week, you know, I, initially I had thoughts of quitting. I was like, okay, I already hit 4,000, even if it was only for, you know, a day and a half, I still did it. Um, but then, you know, a part of me was like, you know, I don't want to quit, and I want to keep going. So um, my clan mates obviously cheered me on and gave me encouragement. So I... Uh, I sucked it up, and that whole week was really, really tough. But you know, I went through it and went up one cup at a time and hit four thousand by the end of the next weekend. Just wow! So you weren't only the first player to get four thousand, but you're also the second player to get four thousand cups. Yeah, I guess technically, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on that one, even if it was <laughs> unintentional. Yeah. So how was that road back? That sounds really painful going over the same steps once again. Did you have any mistakes in there? Yeah, I actually did. Um, so the first few nights were going perfectly. I I was steadily going up. I was averaging one cup an hour, sometimes a little bit more, which was actually, you know, to my benefit. So I was happy. And then one night I got distracted and just, you know, a lapse in focus, and I forgot to train a full army. I didn't have all my drags, so I went into battle with only three dragons. 
Um, and I was excited to see a battle, so I started the battle and then realized after the fact that, oh, I only had three dragons with me. So I tried my best to get 50%, but it, was, it wasn't happening. <laughs> Ouch. So how many you lose there? I believe it was 39. Oh, so that's another big setback. <laughs> yeah, close to a hundred, mm, like probably 80 uh, between the two big losses. Was that another mistake against a friend or not a friend this time? No, not a friend this time. Uh, it was, um, yeah, just someone else who lucked out. <laughs> so when you were watching your initial, when you came back and you too, realized you are too late and you are getting attacked, uh, what was your reaction when you were watching that countdown? Nervous. I mean, I knew I was going to be losing substantial cups, but, you know, part of me, I was just sitting there like, okay, well, it's already happening, so hope for the, hope for the best. That's hard. That's hard. Okay, then. So let's talk about some other things. So after the first part of the interview came out, I released all three roughly at the same time. And there was a lot of discussion online in the forums, in the YouTube comment section, on Reddit. And uh, there was a couple people. Everyone was really glad to hear your side of it because you let in a lot of vision and a lot of information out about this pretty quiet and private uh, community at the top trophy counts. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate that. But some people, a very few small minority, had a big issue with uh, one thing in particular, and that was cheap shields. So you okay. want to tell us again what cheap shields are? All right, so the concept of cheap shielding is when uh, you're essentially going outside of your clan and attacking and hopefully finding someone in your clan uh, through the normal battle queue. Now, you have to analyze a few things when you do find someone in your clan, which the odds are very, very, very slim. Um, it's very rare to find people in your clan, but it does happen. So when you do find them, however, you have to realize that your cup level and their cup level um, determines the amount of cups that you can win or lose on the battle. So if it's an even, if even trade off, it's not really, you know, worth it. So the only instance where this, uh, I guess, strategy works is when you have someone who's significantly higher and attacking someone who's significantly lower in cup level. And the end when result have, of this uh, is what? So the end result is because the higher cup level is attacking the lower cup level, the higher cup level can only gain a few cups, maybe one, two cups at most. So they gain the one or two cups, and then the other party gets a 12-hour shield and only loses one or two cups. So to them, it's worth it in the end because you're you're basically lowering the risk of someone else taking, you know, 15 cups, 30 cups, or even more. Because that other person would be close to their trophy count. Exactly, someone else. And they would also be, you know, using their full army, trying to get two stars, three stars, the goal is not to, you know, get to more than one star on your own uh, clan member. So this uh, tactic works for anyone, really, but it's only effective for people at the very top trophy counts attacking their clan mates who are still at high trophy counts but lower. Right. So this isn't like a glitch or an abuse or any sort of hack that's happening here. This is completely no. game mechanics. Correct. So I think there was some confusion over this and a separate thing. Uh, and a while back, there was a player, so I've got their name written down here, so 0977772999. Uh, okay. They're still a top-level player up in the top 200 somewhere. Right. But they had been able to rise very quickly to the top of the leaderboards, and I'm not really familiar with that situation. Can you explain what happened there and if that was a similar thing or a hack? So with 0977, that wasn't a hack. Um, it was a special circumstance where... He had a bug in his just his account. It was a glitch in the system where he was able to revenge someone over and over again. Now, you know, it's a completely different situation, and it wasn't like he he did it on purpose. So It's not like yeah, he activated it on purpose or anything, so that makes sense. Right. So some players were trying to connect what your deal with Cheap Shield was to what he had done. Uh, this pretty much seems to be pretty much not the case, right? No, it's a completely different situation. It's like comparing apples to oranges. All right, so thank you very much for that. That, I hope, clears up some confusion and uh, a little bit of heated discussion that was happening on the forums back when the last couple parts were released. 
So I also noticed at the top of leaderboards, there have been recently a couple new faces seen around. Well, maybe not completely brand new to leaderboards, but uh, there have been three CPN99 members who are at the top right now. Uh, do you know what the situation with that is? Um, I mean, they're obviously trying to either get top three uh, from the same clan, or um, I see Yusuf is trying to probably take me down at 4,000. And to be honest, I, I really uh, I commend their, you know, perseverance and if they do reach 4000 i would congratulate them because or whoever hits 4000 because it's not an easy feat um you know the last 100 cups are very difficult to get and you know, i have a lot of respect for anyone who has that perseverance um so i would congratulate them that's a very noble position for you to take and uh, i'm glad you say that so there is sort of the interesting mechanic, though, in the game of how players can get to a higher and higher trophy count. And so the way I see it is this. Uh, the way trophies work is as time goes on, they sort of like migrate upwards. So a while back, the first player broke 3,000 trophies, and now you're breaking 4,000. But you're only able to do that because the entire leaderboards are higher up, because you need them to sort of stand on top of, in a way. Right. So does that mean sometime in the future you'll think that people will be breaking 5,000 trophies, 10,000 trophies, whatever it may be, given enough time for the leaderboards to continue rising? Uh, I think it really depends on the amount of users that join and, and play this game because uh, each person, I believe, is assigned uh, an initial cup count, and you can only obviously steal cups from other players. So There's a limited know, you number, but exactly. at the same time, some of them are moving upwards. Right. So, I mean, you still need to increase the total pot, which is just the lower lower guys increasing in numbers. And then, you know, those cups will slowly trickle up. So, you know, as long as users remain in the game and they're increasing the amount of players, yeah, I don't see why it wouldn't go to 5,000 or 6,000 in the future. It's interesting, though, because it sounds like players get into those counts. It's not like it's a, a skill indicator as much as... A a dedication and the amount of effort you need to put in for that particular count. So players, whoever gets to 6,000, when five, sorry, 5,000 first, will most likely take the exact same route that you did. Someone gets to high 4,000s, and then they just have a really long, really hard stretch ahead of them to get up higher. Does that sound like everyone who breaks every milestone will have a, the same sort of rough fight that you did? Um, it's hard to say, really, because... It depends on how close you are to the second guy, and it really depends on how far ahead you want to be when you reach that benchmark and how quickly you want to get it. That is, that is um, being farther ahead means that you'll have a harder time getting there. Yeah, exactly, but it also makes it look like you know you you stand alone. I see, I see. So moving forward, uh, there was an update over the last two weeks while you were – getting to 4,000 and then dropping down accidentally and then getting back. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about some of the things that new updates, starting with the new air defense and how that impacts high-level play? Um, yeah, so dragons are almost non-existent uh, anymore due to this update. The air defense increases. Um, all archer towers have a new level. And, oh, the new air, new air bombs. Yeah, the air bombs are deadly, so... You know, the dragons are used far less now. I, th I still some people use them, um, but not many anymore. A lot are converting into to P.E.K.K.A. or P.E.K.K.A. players. So. so on the whole, do you think this update was rather defensive-oriented? The other things that were upgraded, so we had unit upgrades to level 6, of course. We right. had Teslas, and some very interesting things happened with Teslas. Right. Buffed walls, uh and then some other things that seem to be more offensive. Heroes and spells both got time decreases. Right. On the whole, do you think that those are more defensively oriented? Uh, I believe so. I think it's both, but I think it's more on the defensive side, which is what the game really needed. Uh, more people are winning on defense now. However, the um, the cost of doing so, it you know, to upgrade all these things, obviously still remains an issue, and the, you know, people are upset about that, but at the end of the day, um, you know, I think that the, it made a definite improvement in terms of defense in the game.
So whenever stuff comes out, uh, people seem to like think that Supercell is like selling out and just charging a lot more gems. This update, though, seems like while it did release new levels of things, for, especially with the Archer Tower and the uh, units and the air defense, but at the same time, they also reduce the hero train time and the spell train time. So it seems like you guys are going to be spending less gems at the top trophy counts. Right, that's that's correct. So I, I think that Supercell did you know, indirectly get the message and is indirectly uh, trying to make it cheaper, I guess, instead of, you know, outright making it less expensive for, you know, a chest of gems, they're decreasing the amount of time or gems needed to do certain actions in the game. So um, that's one way of, you know, decreasing the amount of cost for gems. So one other uh, update of this last uh in this last update, was the new leaderboard. So there's a lot of people on the leaderboards now, and you can, if you look there, you can see nearly down to 3,000 trophies in the top 200 players of the world. Uh, right. How many of these players do you think are gemming really heavily, and do you think it's possible to get on the leaderboards without gemming? Yeah, I, I, I definitely think so, uh, especially on local as well. I'm, I'm really glad that they added that and expanded uh, both leaderboards because... It does give hope to non-gemmers to see themselves on the leaderboard. Even if you're top 200, you know, adding the local uh, leaderboard, um, you know, you're competing obviously against less players, but you're, it's still pretty cool to see yourself. Hey, you know, I'm X ranked in my own country. That's pretty cool. You know, so I'm glad they added that, and you know, it does give hope and like obviously goals for people who don't gem and want to see themselves on the leaderboard at some point. I uh, I approve of that sort of decision as well, and I think it is certainly a useful tool for everyone to see sort of a little bit more of where they stand, both locally and uh, around, especially for the top-level players. So last time we did talk about sort of your plans once you reached 4,000, and you had been uh, planning on dropping down uh, in the trophy count. Do you still plan on sticking to that, and what are your plans for the near future? Uh, so... Right now, I haven't really decided what I want to do, but I do know that I want to back off and relax a little bit more when I do come back. So, you know, don't be surprised seeing me drop, you know, initially. I'll probably end up attacking a couple times, but not nearly as much as before where I would have to net positive for the day. or Otherwise, you know, I would stay up all night. I'll probably make a couple attacks and then go on defense, see how I do, and you know, slowly drop need be. The game right now, it, it'll naturally even itself out unless you put in the time and effort to maintain it. So, um, you know, me not maintaining it as much as I used to will make my cups drop. So so I also heard there's a hidden update in this last update relating to shields and high-level players. Uh, how does that work? So in the last update, they eliminated the one-week shield that you could buy with gems for any player that's above 3,000 trophy count. So that sounds like a pretty big change. Uh, did you be, Were you able to like buy one of those like you were planning on doing, or did uh, they take that away first? Oh, luckily, I, I bought mine the day before the update, so I lucked out and got to use my one-week shield for the last time. Wow, so you had six days of shield that uh, was sort of a final farewell to that seven-day shield for those top players. Yeah. So you think they'll keep the top leaderboards a lot more active? And uh, how do people, how do top level players sort of respond to this? Are they happy, sad with this change? Oh, they're clearly sad with this. Uh, you know, you want to go on vacation and take breaks and not see your cups drop when you come back. So a one week shield was intended for that purpose, I guess. But you know, I can I can certainly understand why they you know Supercell removed it for trophy counts above three thousand. It does make it more competitive. Um, and a week is a long time, so, you know, there's a lot of fluctuations in the leaderboards within a week, so having a one-week shield where you get to just sit back, you know, some, it is a little bit unfair, but... Interesting change right there. Okay, guys, so we're going to wrap up part four right here, and we'll be back very soon for part five of this interview. In part five, we'll be taking your guys' questions for Jorge. So you can leave them in the comments section below, and Jorge will try to answer them, or you can uh, send me a message, and we'll try to include them if we ever do a future things. But beyond that, we'll be including already asked questions in part five, which should be out already. Look for the annotation on your screen or in the description. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll leave you with some shout-outs from Jorge.
would like to give a few shout outs. Bear with me. Um, no problem. Take be, all the uh, time you want. It's going to be pretty long. So, no, obviously, uh, first and foremost, North 44, everyone in there. Uh, Lebesters, Ahmed, Sammy, our Core Matter, Turbo, Charles, TB Reckon, Intardis, Neo, Matteo, Edster, Ashton, Bumuter, Bayram, Death Dealer, El Haza, uh, Chin Tamp, TJH. Uh, thank you guys. Ra- Rachel, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Crazy Tariq and Undercover Moose. Uh, love everyone. Those are all the elders, so I have to pay my respects. Nice. Um, from Awakening, uh, Matthias, Matt, he's a, he's a buddy of mine. Um, from Clan Holland, Yori, uh, Bang Boy, uh, Tutita, um, all the kids in Holland, you know, you guys are amazing. Thanks for the support. Uh, TLNC, I, I already gave them a shout out so they get double this time. <laughs> Physics, um, and his girl, his girlfriend, Nerdy Girl, thank you for helping out with TLNC. Um, people probably hate you for taking them, but I love you. <laughs> um, to a special friend, actually, even though she's, she recently quit the game, um, I had the pleasure of getting to know her and meeting her. Even though she is in Bombay, Canada, I'll still give her a shout-out. Her name's Claudia, um, and she's just a good friend. So I toast her off and wish her the best of luck. And then last uh, but not least, Honor44, it's our farming clan. Um, Both the North creators or founders are there now, Dando and Victor. um, Pay my respects to them. And then to all the supporters out there, um, sorry I can't add you on Game Center. I appreciate the support, but I understand completely. This has been Flammy, and this has been Jorge Yao signing out, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.